I'll let you lead because I don't know where we're going. <laughs> Good afternoon everybody, Carl Biker here and I'm in Thorntonley Dale or I'm just leaving Thorntonley Dale and in front of me on this big pan-European is Paul from the Biking Life channel behind me is Graham on the Africa Twin from Adventures with Woody now incorrectly named should be called Dotty Adventures because his new bike's called Dotty I just go for a little ride up to uh, Dolby Forest. I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Last time I was on a ride uh, where Paul was present was the Pulse of the Moors ride, which, um, well, for a lot of us was a bit of a, a bit of a failure. There was a route planned, but I kind of assumed that we'd be following somebody at the time as did most people um, but then when we found out on the day nobody was actually leading it we all set off on the right path but at the first uh, roundabout we all went in different directions uh, so it uh, it ended quickly I never did the full route because I didn't know the way and I ended up finding Huggy Bryn also known as Nick who conked out the side of the road on his new Triumph having that all too common problem at the time with Triumphs of the cables being a little bit shorter than they needed to be. So they ended up pulling and stretching and eventually snapping and then you either got the bike conking out or engine management lights. So it was quite handy that I went the wrong way in the end because it meant I could uh, get behind Huggy and follow him for a bit, make sure he was alright, follow him as far as I could before he went off back to Leeds and I went off back to Beverley. Are we turning? We're turning. Dolby, the Great Yorkshire Forest. It's a weird road, this. In one way, it's great for bikers. In fact, in two ways, it's great for bikers because one of those ways is it's free, which doesn't sound brilliant, but if you're in a car, it's kind of not free. Or it's free to drive through. If you stop, you have to pay. Uh, or if you don't get through quick enough, you have to pay. You've got a certain amount of time from going in the entrance gates to the exit gates uh, to get through. And if you don't manage it in that amount of time, then you have to pay to get out. Whereas on a bike, you can just sneak past the gates. Um, legally, not really sneaking. It's what you're supposed to do. The other reason it's good for bikes is the road surface is wonderful. Although... I might be challenging myself on that one because it, it seems to have resurfaced a bit here with some quite loose stuff. Ah, that's better. We're now on the smooth stuff that's been over salted. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderfully, beautifully smooth surface. The only place around here that I know that's as good is the bit at Scarborough, the racing circuit on the hill, Oliver's Mount, which has got beautiful tarmac. The problem is that because it's got such beautiful tarmac, and here's the sneaky pass part, because it's got such beautiful tarmac, you want to go quicker. Very nice of him. But it's only a 30 mile an hour zone. And it's really, really difficult on roads as nice as this, with lovely, lovely bends as well. Not on this bit, obviously, this is very straight. Lovely, lovely bends as well very difficult to keep it to 30 miles an hour. This is the uh, Dolby Forest. Isn't it pretty? I used this route on one of my ride outs a few years back. Really looking forward to being able to organise a ride out again. Hopefully we will soon. And I also remember the last time I came through it with Graham, as we came through, some deer ran out and I was so excited by the, 
idea of seeing a deer run across and going, look, there's a deer. So I didn't spot the second deer that ran out behind it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I nearly collected a deer. Deer. Another deer. That one was closer. <laughs> It's me looking at the two deer <laughs> in the trees and one runs across in front of me. <laughs> I'm a bit of a sucker for the wildlife. It we're an adventurer mode like standing up. Not so easy on this bike. It's possible though. Hey! I'm adventuring too! <laughs> that pan-European thing's huge! Looks great for storage though. Paul uses it to uh, go to work on every day. So obviously it's good for that kind of thing. I can see that being a great bike for um, sticking camera equipment in. Going on trips and whatnot. I guess hence the pan-European name. Maybe post-Brexit should be called the pan-Britain in this country. <laughs> Pan-Great Britain and Northern Ireland. How many people did I trick about say Brexit? This is a bit of Dolby Forest where you've got all the zip lines. See somebody going down a zip line there. Looks good fun. It's weird how things have changed. We got these zip lines up here that you can go down. So they put you in like a harness that straps over your shoulders, around your waist and around your gentleman's area, or ladies area. Um, and then they attach you to the thing and off you go sliding down. The last time I went on a zip line, I was probably about 12. And it was nice to go and visit my granddad who lived in Devon, right on the south coast, a good few hundred miles away and in the old uh, uh, Morris Minor Traveller that my dad had. It took us about eight or nine hours to get there. But we'd go to this outdoor swimming area. It's like a huge pond where you could go swimming and there was various rafts and things like that. And they had a zip line. And I remember going down this zip line. They had one above the water, which was good fun. And they had one just through the forest, very similar to this. But health and safety wasn't the way it is now. So what they used to have on the top of it, you had the line down and then they had, it was basically amounted to a piece of rope uh, strapped up with tape with two hoops in it. So you put your hands through the hoops and hold onto the rope and then slide down. And my favorite game was to, instead of putting my hands through it, get my brother to hold onto the rope so it wouldn't slide off by itself while I, uh, was getting sorted and then put both feet through it and they just kind of well hold my feet upwards to hold myself in and then slide down it upside down and then when you got to the bottom you kind of were above kind of gritty soily stuff so you then kind of try and wangle one foot through which would twang the rope over the top <laughs> and then try to brace yourself with your hands rather than land on your face. Not always successfully. Those were the days. The days where you, you know, we would go out at, from age, probably about six, go out by ourselves, come back five, six hours later, covered in mud for our teas. You don't seem to see much of that nowadays. People are too worried about letting the kids out to play, aren't they? Be 
people say there's too many nasty men out to get you. But I don't think there's any, uh, any more now than there were back in the 70s when we were out playing. Just check out the 1970s BBC DJs for evidence. This road's very similar to Oliver's now. Twisty turny, up and down, narrow, 30 miles an hour public road. The only thing different is that this isn't officially a racing circuit. It takes a lot of restraint to not open it up and have some fun. <laughs> this is where we saw the deer last time. Just came running straight across here. No deer this time. Aww. Oh, duckies. <laughs> no deer, but duckies. So that was Dolby Forest. If you're wondering why Graham's ahead, we stopped in the middle. Because there's some doubt about whether we can actually get out again. But we're reckoning we probably can, even though the barrier's locked for cars. Although it doesn't appear to even be locked for cars, looking at this. We were told it was locked for cars, but it's not. <laughs> but whether it was or not, we reckon on that Africa twin, he could get through no matter what it was. He could go across that field. Not sure I'd be able to follow him. This thing really isn't designed for <laughs> wet mud. <laughs> It's a shame they go over the board with the salt, isn't it? It is now April and it's been dry for a long time. And salt on dry roads when there's no risk of rain seems pointless because there's nothing to freeze. But you can actually see it sparkling, the amount of salt. And I can see Graham's bike picking it up. Not if the camera will pick it up, probably not, because it'll look a lot further away than he is. But you can see a little cloud of dust coming off the back of the uh, back tyre. Not sure if that was the end of Dolby Forest then or if this is a bit more Dolby Forestry. Should have done it in Dobley. This is where the not only the Africa Twin but the Pan-European have a distinct advantage over me. The bumpy bit. The bumpy gravelly bit. I've ridden over a lot of these and that's why I've got no fillings left but if I had some they'd be being rattled out <laughs> nice parking of view, lots of trees, they say Alton Towers theme park is now open again, who needs roller coasters when you've got a bike? Owning one of these things is like having a lifetime membership, but more exciting. Some people would say more dangerous, but then some people have been severely damaged at Holton Towers, so. And they didn't have the opportunity to steer out of the way.
maybe this is the bit we can't get through. Suddenly this has become a magical mystery tour. No idea where I am now. Don't think I've ridden this road before. Reminds me a bit of that thing I was talking about earlier. Where we used to take the zip line down. A bit smaller, this one, than the one we used to go to. But I was a lot smaller, so who knows? Might just seem bigger at the time. And just seem smaller now. Like Cadbury's Cream Eggs. Or Wagon Wheels. Follow on from the last video. Still got the uh, gear oil on. It was only yesterday I recorded the previous video mind you but uh, it's done a good hundred miles now and it's still looking moist if that's the right word to use still greasy or oily that's the word isn't it oily That wasn't very nice, was it? Was it a hose pipe? Was it a hose pipe? Got sprayed with a hose pipe. Guess somebody doesn't like people on bikes. I shan't do the motor madness thing and go back and have a fight. It's only a bit of water in it. Probably a kid. But finally back into civilization, nearly at Scarborough. That's quite a, an interesting little detour we took. Now time for a cup of tea, because coming over that last hill, blooming cold. Although it looks lovely, it is actually quite nippy. biggest problem we've got now is that I'm leading the way and I'm hopeless <laughs> hopeless at direction I think it's this way and the good thing about getting lost is you get to find new places and with a phone in your pocket nowadays you can never really be lost can you although there does become a point where you look behind you and see that you've been, you're on your own now. <laughs> Graham is uh, well versed with Scarborough, so he probably knows a much better way. He'll probably be sat at the uh, cafe when I get there. Brewing hand. Oh no, they're back there. So maybe I went the right way after all. Hmm. 
room for a small one. Well, I've not seen Scarborough this busy for a long time. They even got the up and top bus out. And here we are. Well, if that made it into a video, then thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe, and I'll talk to you all again soon.